boy, I tell you what. That doesn't look stock, does it? Stock it is no longer. This is our XMC channel collaboration project that we're doing with Joseph Nowak. See, right up there. Now, I have been doing some stuff. If you haven't watched the other videos, let me just catch you up real quick. I filled this thing with JB Weld. All right. I filled it with JB Weld in hopes of achieving more CFM. If not only more CFM, more booster signal would also be a good trade-off. From stock, we have already gained about 84 CFM over the stock configuration with the modifications we did previously before all the JB Weld. Now we're moving on to step two, which is all this funky JB welding, which I have a whole lot more to do yet on, but I took a break on that and actually worked on the boosters uh, because messing with the stock straight leg boosters is a big part of, well, step two. Let me bring you in and show you what I got going on. Check it out. I have done some extensive work on these straight leg boosters. Here is a stock one, for example. Right? That's the plain Jane booster, the way it comes from the factory. We're not there anymore. Now it's, uh, well, she's opened up. We got rid of the crossbar. Okay. That was a big part of it. So all I did was I took a drill bit and I drilled out the center of that crossbar. Then I came back in with a burr and a die grinder. Uh, die grinder. And I polished the rest of it out. Okay. So you can kind of see right like that. Then, not only did I do that, I also worked on the bottom side. Now on this side here, I did not touch the bottoms yet. Look at how much meat there is on that casting. Over here, I flared out the bottoms, okay? Really trying to make more of a Venturi effect with these bad boys because the walls inside this booster are virtually straight up and down. There's no like hourglass Venturi shape at all in these things except for you know rate right, the flare on the top and a little bit of a flare on the bottom so i used as much meat as i could to flare the bottoms out as much as possible have yet to do those and that's what we got so far in addition to working on the boosters i have also kind of ported the entry a, a little bit i still have a lot of work left to do more work than I was anticipating as per always right uh, trying to get this JB weld into a nice cohesive shape uh, right now I'm cutting big and I'm gonna go back in and refill uh, because frankly there's some spots here that need refilling right and uh, just overall touching up it's going to look a whole lot better when it's done than this right now. But you can already kind of see the basic idea of what's going on here, right? And, well, I mean, the uh, boosters, right? Looks like it will flow a lot more CFM with the bars cut out. But flowing CFM isn't the big concern, really. You got to flow more CFM, but I also want it to still function, right? Uh, again, this may never actually go on a car, but I, everything I do, I want to be able to, you know, say it still functions, right? And removing the crossbar from the straight legs is kind of an iffy one. Because the bar is an essential, well, I mean, it's built into the design, right? It's the thing that helps it pull fuel out. If you compare the straight leg with a down leg, its closest, you know, competitor here, you can notice a few different things, other than the fact that it, you know, down leg is down into the Venturi bore more, right? Besides that fact, there are a few other key differences that I've noticed. And it's kind of hard to tell, but if you look at the actual opening in the center, 
the down legs opening in the center is smaller than the straight leg. It's more noticeable over here with the crossbar removed, right? Uh, there's a whole lot more taper and flare on the tops of these than there is on the tops of that. And that really creates the Venturi effect far more than this guy does, right? I mean, take a look at this. If you'll focus, there you go. She is straight up and down in there. It, it, it's, you know, there's no curves to this bad boy. We flip him over. Look at that. In excess. Oh, well, it's got a little ding defect in that one. Weird. But the Venturi effect is dramatic on the top and the bottoms of these. And notice that the hole where the fuel comes out of does not intersect the actual opening, right? I mean, the, the hole is over to the side, not directly in the path of the air. Now we come over here. The hole is, well, front and center. I mean, look at that, right? That could really inhibit the ability for the fuel to come flowing out. I mean, we're here. The air does not inhibit the fuel from flowing out. Here, it just might. And that's partly the reason why I flared out the bottoms of these so much. See, that's its stock. That's it all flared out. And that's kind of helping, in a way, if you just look straight up and down, kind of helping conceal that hole a little bit better where the fuel comes out of. Yeah, a little bit better than that, right? So, yeah. So ultimately, we might be trading off signal actual booster efficiency for CFM. I don't know. I'm going to try and do everything in my power to maintain booster signal, because that's a key part of this whole process that I'm very closely paying attention to. But we also kind of want, you know, the additional CFM that that's going to offer. Now, how are we going to actually test this? I believe Joseph Nowak, when he's flow, be flow benching, flow testing this carburetor, he is actually testing for booster signal as well. I believe he's taken readings from its stock, the step one modifications, and the step two modifications as soon as we get well, this part done, right? He mentioned in his video about booster signal going up with the step one. So I believe he's tracking it and we will be able to tell what the booster signal is doing. So that's good. Um, other things I could do, I can go in here, or could go in here, and actually make a step in this booster. Now, a step would essentially be going in here right to this hole and making a ledge. Like, cutting it, boring it, just straight, right? Making a ledge up past that hole to the top. So that way, the top air flows in, there's a little ledge there that the fuel can then come out of and then get broken up by the air instead of having to come in and actually fight its way through the air to get out. That is one possibility. It, it's a little trickier to do here. Be, well, frankly, because of the tools I have on hand. I mean... I, I made this, <laughs> this, this contraption, just a scotch bright to uh, help uh, polish the booster. So I, I don't, I'm, you know, I don't have a machine shop around here or nothing. Another thing I could potentially do is, once I flare out the bottoms of all of them, come in and, or, well, let me bring you in and show you. What I could do is I could come in to the bottom of this hole and make a little notch, right? A little V groove for the fuel to come flowing down before it comes hitting the air. 
That way it has a place to go before it actually enters the airstream. All right? That that that's another possibility. But I mean just the flaring out of the bottom alone is going to help immensely with that issue too. I think possibly a lot of the reason why people have trouble getting, you know, removing the crossbar is because they don't really do anything else with the booster besides that. I mean, look at how much meat is left on this bottom here compared to that. That looks pretty sweet, doesn't it? I mean, that that's a whole lot more flared out than, uh, oh, uh, well, you know, it is stock. Also, really, if you think about it, and, you know, th this might be nitpicky, right? But if you think about it, the fuel is going to come. It's going to hug the walls of the uh, booster body. It's going to come shooting out, hug the walls, and it's essentially going to drip off the bottom of the booster into the airstream. Now, if you have a smaller diameter hole, right, that's less surface area for the fuel to drip off of. By essentially widening the diameter of the hole that the fuel can drip off of, well, you're maximizing surface area, therefore the fuel should be able to drip off the boosters into finer particles, right? Now that could be just really nitpicky, but there might be something to that. Who knows? But at the end of the day, we're, I mean, I'm going to do what I can do. We'll send her off and we'll get the results. If the results are not what we want, I mean, if we backtrack quite a bit, if this, like, ruins the carburetor, we can always fix it, right? I mean, the <laughs> customization is clearly the name of the game. I can come back in and I can add metal and I can, you know, fill in the uh, booster and completely change the booster out entirely. Uh relocating where the boosters are is actually in a future plan uh not going to get into that but ultimately it's not the end of the world if this doesn't work out because that's literally what we're trying to figure out what works and what doesn't we've been on the right track so far but this could backtrack it who knows uh any hoozle though so what we have left is I got to finish the JB Weld stuff, right? I got my trusty butter knife from Junkyard Necromancer. Oh, you're not going to be able It's too much glare, isn't it? It says official New Guy's Garage multi-tool. New Guy's Garage official multi-tool. Junkyard made up a bunch of these uh, butter knives because I use them with screwdrivers and shit all the time. Uh because I think it's hilarious. Uh, he made up a bunch of them for me. Which, which is good because I've already thoroughly destroyed... <laughs> already thoroughly destroyed one with JB Weld. Uh, actually, you know, applying the stuff. But I'm going to keep applying and removing and getting this top the way I want it. But there was another part to this whole thing. Which is the base plate swap where we're going to put a 750 base plate on this carburetor. It's a 600, in case you don't know. And we're going to put a 750 base plate on it, uh, which is quite the dramatic change. I've had a change of heart, though. We're not going to do that for step two. Why, though? Well, because this is supposed to be a learning experience. And we're doing so much stuff up here on top with the booster mods, with all this JB Weld, that if we add in the bottom too, we're not going to learn as much, right? I want to isolate what we do to key factors. That way we can actually see the tangible results. I mean, this could hurt it quite a bit. And then we just make it up with the base plate, like, Assuming this helps it a ton and this hurt it a little bit, we might not be able to see that result if we do it all at once. We'll see a net get I mean we'll see a net positive in CFM, but we would never realize that all the positive came from the base plate and this actually hurt us quite a bit. Or vice versa. 
So I want to isolate this step two to just the top. Okay, that's all we're going to do. We're going to send it in with the 600 base plate, get a flow test, then we will do for step three, the base plate swap, send it back. That way we can deduce what it does, right? I think that's the best course of action. Just that way we learn a little bit more. There is also one other thing I want to send with as an experiment. Now, Joseph Nowak, he did a video where he's testing a bunch of air filters, right? And in his test, he tested an old school velocity stack. And he came to the determination that the velocity stack actually hurt CFM through, through the carburetor. Now, I mean, it was, it was hovering about, like, they had to hold the thing down to the carburetor. Otherwise, it would just, like, hover above the carburetor. Really freaky. So, I want to test velocity stacks again, but I want to test my own design of velocity stack. The bell mouth. Right? I want to see how effective this bell mouth stack is in comparison to the traditional velocity stack. So we're going to send this along with, that way we can get that test back to back also. That can be a video in of itself, actually, uh, for Joseph Nowak and me. So that's another thing we're going to be doing. I want to send this along to see if this stack, because in my own belief, I believe this style is the superior style, but I want to get actual flow bench numbers to either prove or disprove that fact. So that's going to be an additional test to go along with it. And I mean, this thing is beat up to all hell too. So if this, you know, works, I, I have, I have, I'm placing my bets on this one, all right? I'm going to say it. All right, so that's the update video so far. That's what we've done with the boosters, okay? That's what we're planning on doing with the JB Weld, which I got to really start working on, right? Uh, trust me, it's going to look way, way nicer than this. It, it will always look worse before it looks better, okay? It, it's going to be nice. And that's what we're doing with the base plate. We're going to skip it this time around just so we can learn more things about what's actually going on here. And additionally, we're going to add another test on top of it, right? I want to see this versus the old school, you know, velocity stack. Because I believe this will win. But with all that being said, I have to finish the boosters, the other two boosters, and get working on this JB Weld. Uh, I think the biggest thing for me, honestly, to tell you the truth, I have to get it all one color because this white and gray com color combo is messing with my eyes and I can't get it like straight, right? So that's why I'm cutting big and I'm going to go back in and refill. Uh, that way it's all mostly one color. But that being said, that's the plan. That That's what we got going on. So I'm going to get to it. I'll catch you next time.